G'day everyone, uh, popping in from our usual live chat uh, Friday show. I've been on a few days this week though due to all the announcements. Um, I'm just having a Coke today, no stubbies today. Uh, it's a bit cool outside. What is the temperature today anyway? It's um, 16 degrees Celsius. Um, so we're going to have a chat all about that, the new releases or what the potential new releases may be. Um, I'm only going to go lightly over the stuff that I've covered in the last couple of videos because... You know, I, I, you can go back and look at those too, but uh, I'm now burping because I've had the Coke. I will bring that up, um, particularly the Fuji from yesterday, because I think that's got a direct reference to the uh, A7000. So we'll talk about that all together. Um, so just pop in on the chat. I'm going to give this a bit of a pre-show time to let everyone get on board. Um, that way we'll know when everyone starts uh, logging on. Yeah, 16 degrees Celsius. I know, it's that's Celsius, it's cold. <laughs> uh, we are just coming out of uh, winter here, though, MBW. Um, so who have we got in here anyway? Let's have a look, and I'll say hi to everyone that's popped in. Um, MBW's here, the Essential Lights here, 10 p.m. in Texas. Johnson City Aerial's here, September the 18th. We're going to talk about that shortly. Um, as well as, will it be APSC? So I'm going to mention that as well. Ron uh, Hay on 5th uh, here, good to see you Ron, Wayne's also here, Michelle um, is here, um, where are we, the Essential Light saying Fuji X-T3, Canon EOS R and Nikon Z6, Z7, uh, if Fuji can put dual card slots in the APS-C camera, Nikon Canon should have too, yep I agree with that wholeheartedly, especially for the price that they're offering um, there, but I'll, I might talk about that in a minute. Um, Charbox, how many cameras do you have? Well, I've got a few. I've got the A9, I've got the A7 uh, III, I've got the A7 R2, I've got the A6500 and the A6300. 11pm um, in Singapore, Aaron's saying good morning as well. Um, hey bud, uh, good job on doing the live stream, thanks so much, Common Culture. Chris saying, what's up, David O? G'day, Chris, how are you? Peter's also here. Um, keep up what you're doing, thanks, no worries. Um, thumbs up, peeps. Yeah, I'd love you to give me a thumbs up, guys, because it does let people know I'm on live. Um, Carl's also here from Los Angeles. Charbox, are you going to photo Kina? No. My wedding season actually starts now. Uh, I think I start weddings again in two weeks. Uh, and then I'm flat out basically till well after Christmas. Weddings every single weekend. Um, Mr. Meredith said Bronx. Uh, James saying hi. Uh, Peregrine said 21 in Brisbane. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Switch flip said that's good. Peter said wow the AX the XT3 excites me. Um, and I'm going to chat about that shortly, Peter. Manuel says Kiwis are going to take the kangaroos down, David. <laughs> Uh, Ron said, I think the Sony a7 III is the best camera out for all the announcements that have been made. Um, oh yeah, I do have the RX uh, V2. Yeah, it's here. Oh, well, I'll show you that in a minute. 5.10pm um, in Daleks. Cheers from LA. Uh, Liam saying, cheers, David. Always happy to see you live. Jason said, Riverside CA, what's up? And Common Culture said, uh, smash the like button. Thanks. Now, oh, before we start, let me just bring that up because... Um, I think I'll just announce it on the photography videography school because I never did that. I might as well give it a quick um, plug while we're here. I always like to do it on here because this site that I've set up is directly related to uh, you guys on YouTube. So if you haven't joined us, join this photography videography school. Uh, I'm going to put an announcement on there because I like to announce everything I'm doing on YouTube there. Because sometimes, uh, sometimes YouTube now is not ringing the notification bell, and that's been one of the issues. So I often do it on here. I usually also give warning on here too that um, it's going on sort of live now, so people can pop over. Um, let me just see if I can also copy that, and I'll put the link in. Edit. That's why too, it's a good thing to join this site. Um, 
because it shows it, it basically it's I'll always put announcements on there when it's coming up. Um, we've got over 2,000 members now, so it's growing very fast. You can see we've added 89 in the last um, in the last week. It's growing really quick. I have a weekly uh, task which we put on the header up there. Um, so we do. I put a weekly task in each time. This one's been um, uh, time lapse. Actually, I must look at that to see who's won. But people are really posting stuff. Very positive um, site. Uh, and it's related to everyone. You don't have to be a Sony lover to come on here. It, it's basically anyone can pop in. I, I encourage videographers um, and everyone to share their work. You can share your um, Instagram pages. You can share your YouTube feeds, business pages. You can share everything. Uh, I'm going to talk about this little thing in a minute. I haven't even unboxed it yet. I'm going to do it with you guys. Um, so please join us on there. It's a fantastic site. Very positive. If, if I see someone in there that's not being positive and has an ego, I'm going to kick them out immediately. I don't want this like other sites where people are too afraid to ask for critiques or if they don't want critiques. Um, so please, uh, if you know, join it if you are nervous about because some sites, there are some terrible people out there that will comment terribly on your image you post. I won't allow that in there at all. If you join it and someone does that, just notify me and I'm, uh, I'll act on it as quickly as we can. Um, so please join us there. Uh, so now I've put that announcement over there. Um, let me just go back to the questions. And if you're coming in later, just skip to where it shows most of the images signed. I will put a timeline down below so that we can, um, uh, you can skip to those uh, points as well. Uh, let me just see here if anyone else has said anything before we actually start the show officially. Um, Liam said, always happy to see you live. Yeah, pleasure. I love I loved talking to you guys. Like I've said before, it's like um, a bunch of mates talking, and that's what I want this about. Uh, it's just like we're all sitting around a, a round table and having a chat amongst a, a bunch of mates. Um, listening with my daughter, a great little photographer. That's great, Carl. That's fantastic. Uh, the only camera I'm excited to see is the A7S III. We're going to talk all about that shortly. I am DeBrowns here. G'day, mate. Um, new Boy said, new APS-C would be amazing if Sony releases more APS-C lenses, honestly. Um, Johnson City said, I think the Panasonic full frame will turn out to be one of the more interesting releases. Yeah, I'm curious about that too. It's going to be interesting to see what mount they have on that. Uh, we're still waiting to see what that is. So that, that is going to be really interesting. Um, 4K, well, I'm certainly hoping it's got 4K 60p, both cameras, so we'll soon know about that. Vincent said, hello, David, haven't joined one of your discussions in a while. I hope you've been good. I've been great. Thanks, Vincent. Um, Java said, hello, David, come on, guys, crush that like button. Um, thanks for saying that. At least people know that I'm online. Um, Tamron hopefully releases something similar. Long rider, David O. said, I talked to... Ken, the anger photographer today, he says you don't do a good impression of him. <laughs> I should have done that video yesterday um, of it. He actually laughed. He said he liked it when I put that on one of the comments. I don't think he liked what I was saying, but he actually said it was a very good um, uh, takeoff of him. Stacy said, well, finally made a live show. Good to see I am De Brown. Hello, David Osler. Now make sure too for the question side, guys, Put the at David Osa because it will be that I can see it if you really want a question answered. Sometimes I'll miss them if you don't do that. Uh, so it's important to put that in if you do want me to come through it on question time. Um, comment culture said, can I ask what capture device camera combo you use? Yeah, let me see if I can show you that. So what I'm using are these uh, Ultra Studio mini recorders down here. Uh, so that's what's connected via Firewire. So my camera basically is up here. I'm using the A7R at the moment. Um, so I'm using the A7R there, connected by HDMI down to this Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. And then that's got Firewire, which is directly connected over there onto my um, Mac Pro. And uh, the audio is, is routed through the Zoom H6 there, uh, if you can see that on that side. So that's basically what the audio is coming through at the moment. Uh, and obviously the, it comes through an Apollo twin, which is down there as well. Uh, that's my setup though. You can just sort of see the second monitor that I use there. 
I'm going to do another studio tour because it's been a while since I've done one. You can see up there that this is my large screen 65-inch uh, monitor TV up there that clients watch um, their videos and stuff like that on when they come in to see their wedding videos. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, I'm using Wirecast to stream. Um, and I'm just, I haven't got my switcher connect. Usually I have a, a switcher connected, but I haven't got that connected. I forgot actually. Um, I'm using a switcher to connect as well. Uh, well, that might be about it before we um, go any further. So, Bryce, I'll answer a few more things uh, in a minute. Let me come back uh, for the live stuff. So let's start. I'm going to quit over to the Osler Images sign and then we'll start the show. I'm going to unbox the Tamron with you and, and then we'll go through some rumours and stuff like that. G'day everyone. I uh, popped in a little bit later today. I've actually had clients this morning so I couldn't pop on any earlier. Uh, looking forward to going through some of these things with you today. We've just had a pre-show. Uh, obviously that'll still be there if you wanted to scroll back and look through that. It was basically just saying ho hello and having a chat to everyone that's popping in. Uh, if you can, uh, we've got 200 watching. If you can please give me a thumbs up. That makes a massive difference to the number of people know that I'm on live because YouTube's doing a weird thing at the moment. It's not notifying people um, through the, you know, your little bell symbol. Uh, they're not getting notified. And I don't know why, but a, a number of people are telling me that they're not getting those notifications. So I really would appreciate if you share this. Um, uh, you know, click on that, uh, that thing just to sort of give a thumbs up. It lets people know that I'm online and it gets around that problem that YouTube's having. So I really would appreciate if you can do that. Now, yesterday, um, it, it was quite interesting. I just, I was, just went to my local, well, it's a big shopping center. Um, I walked in uh, to have a look like I always do, and I noticed in one of the um, windows that there was the new Tamron in there, uh, the 28 to 75. And I've said to you all along that I wanted to buy that lens, uh, but I was waiting for it to come into the store. And I noticed too on um, uh, Sony Alpha Rumors this morning that Adorama has them in stock. So if you did want to get one, Adorama actually has them in stock now, um, which is great. Uh, so. Apparently, the only reason why they had that lens there, a guy had ordered it three months, so it had taken three months for them to get that lens in there, and for some reason, when it came in yesterday, or the day before, he changed his mind. <laughs> and then, so it was just sitting there in the shelf, and I thought, ooh. So I walked past and looked at it, and I thought, I'm gonna get that, uh, because it's the first time I'd actually seen it in the shop. Um, I was hoping Kerry wasn't too angry at me. Um, so I did get it. Now I haven't even opened it yet because I, I only got the box yesterday and I was busy shopping and stuff so I never opened it and I thought I'll just open it up with you guys and we can have a look at it together and I'll explain sort of what I'm thinking about using this uh, in uh, as well. I probably should have put that, I might put that in the header just to say that what I'm actually doing. So let's have a look at it. I might have to use the second camera which is not as good but let me just see what this does. Um, let me put this up here and we'll have a look. Ooh. Is it going to sit? This is a Logitech little um, streaming, I don't know, HD mouse thing. I suppose I can put it over here. Yeah, that'll do. I'll just move the keyboard for a minute. Um, so, yeah, so I walked into the shop yesterday and this was actually in here. Is it going to focus? Yeah, and I, I couldn't believe it when it was actually in there. So I'll open it up and you can have a look. Um, we'll have a look at the lens together. And then I'll sort of explain uh, what it's about. Obviously, you just get your, you know, your little um, instructions or whatever they are. And then the lens itself, let me just see if I can take this. Gee, that's tight. So, the lens itself. So I'll probably, I'll probably keep the box. Not that I've, I very rarely ever sell actual lenses, so I really don't sell them, but it's a good idea to keep them just in case if you ever do want to get rid of them. Um, and, you know, in that way, I suppose, if, if ever you do sell it, some people just like to have the actual boxes. So let me switch back over and I'll show you on this camera, which is better. Um, so yeah, so I saw this yesterday uh, in the shop and I thought, 
your beauty because like I said to you all along I, I did intend to get it I was very fortunate in the fact that Tamron Australia sent me out uh, a copy before this was released and I did a few videos before it was released and I think I'm going to mix up those videos and um, put them together to do a new video now uh, because I've got this and I can sort of just talk about it a little bit more. I was rushed last time because I had to send it back to Tamron. So I think I'll mix some of the footage that I shot from that and uh, put a new video back together reviewing it because it's been ages since I've done that. Uh, and the thing is too that I didn't have any of the issues that people were having with this with the autofocus. So I'm, I'm sure the autofocus is not going to be any different. But, it, but I'm curious to know what firmware version it is. So let me put it onto the A9 and I'm going to check what firmware it is because I think the latest version of the firmware is 0 0.2 um, so I'm gonna switch it on and we'll have a look now it's all you have to do is just go into your menu and check the version which is also how you check the um, uh, it's just you basically just go down now is this gonna focus yeah, you just go, you go down to there and you check version. That will tell you what version of the firmware that you have, and it will also tell you what your lens version is. Now, if it's the latest version, yeah, it is. It says version 0 0.2. So I'm pretty sure that that's the latest version of the Tamron um, lens software. I think the original version that I came out was 0, 0 I think. Uh, I can't remember, but this looks like it has had the latest firmware uh yeah it looks like it's had the latest firmware version put in so i don't have to update the firmware now the great thing is because this is uh sony have allowed tamron to let you update this lens firmware through the camera um it, it's as simple as doing a sony camera so all you do is you just have to connect it via the usb lead and then you can update the firmware of the lenses and that's the great thing about how these lenses are working and it's a, a great feature unlike some other brands where you have to try and get hubs and things like that um, to, to get the update. So this is, this is terrific. Um, now the reason why I wanted to get this was because it was so good in video and that's one of the beauties of this and I do like the feel of it actually. It's The only thing I suppose that gets confusing is uh, the zoom ring is on the end which is totally different to what um, it is on your normal Sony lenses. But Look, it, it is made of like a plastic material, but it is, it does feel really nice and, and really nice. Now, all the reviews that I've seen out there, and I'm going to talk about this, I'm not going to talk about it long because I want to do that separate review. All the reviews that I've seen out there talks about this as being just as good really as a G Master. Let me just adjust this exposure. These lights that I put on take a while to build up. Um, Basically what they say is in the center, it, it probably is sharper than the G Master. It's only on the edges uh, where it may be a little bit softer. But if you look at all the reviews out there when people are saying it, they're saying this is the best value lens that you can buy for Sony at the moment. And I really believe that I would buy this before I'd get the G Master lens. Now some of you may disagree with that, but I would definitely probably buy this before I bought the G Master and then I'd get another Prime. Uh, this is 28, that may not be wide enough for you. So if you did want to go wider than that, at the same money, you could buy an amazing prime, uh, a 12 millimeter or something like that to fit on there uh, and do it. Now, the the main reason I get this, as you know, I do fusion and I want to be able to have, um, put this on the gimbal because it's it's nice and light. It's only 550 grams. So my um, Moser Aircross will take this easily and that's what I did when I, I did the reviews and like I said I'll put that all together for you. So it's lovely to have that on a gimbal where it's not too heavy for me to hold. Um, and the 28 to 75 is fine, I'm, I'm really happy with that. The other thing I adore about this lens is the close focusing ability, it's almost a macro and that's, that's the main reason why I wanted this too, to have that ability to shoot all the bride's details and things like that without having to use a macro. So that's one other great feature about this. So I didn't expect to buy it yesterday. I did the usual thing of a photographer that you guys probably know. Don't go anywhere near a camera shop uh, because I walked in and basically <laughs> bought it straight away and then had to tell Kerry. <laughs> uh, and I... Actually, she handled it pretty well. I wasn't in, in as much trouble as I usually am. So, you know, it was quite funny. 
Um, they are uh, $1,200 here in Australia, so I think they're $7.99 in the US with the dollar exchange rate and everything. So I'm looking forward to using it. I'm looking forward to using it over the next few weddings. Like I said, weddings for me start in two weeks. So as you know, I normally shoot weddings with the 35 and the 85 uh, primes. So the first wedding, couple of weddings that I do actually, I'm not doing video. So I'm not doing video in those first two weddings, which is sort of unusual for me. So I'm going to try using it in the wedding to see how it goes and see how I like just using that 28 to 75 as my main lens and try and keep it just on say the A9 or the A7 III and shoot with it for the whole day and see how that compares to the way that I normally shoot with the 85 and the 1.4. Um, I will still use primes obviously on my second camera like the A7 III um, so I'll still have that same look but I'm, I really want to try to see how the Tamron 28 to 75 goes uh, in that scenario and I'll let you know uh, and I'll take you through the shoot probably and show you how it all came up. So I'll let you know how that goes. So that's what I got. The other thing that I bought too was this little thing. I ended up getting uh, on the RX100 this great little tripod. That I think they've just been released. I had to wait a while to get it. It was on back order. But I love this. It's got like your record button. I think it's similar to the older version. But uh, you know, you've got your zoom. Uh, you've got your record. Um, you've got your photo button through here. And it just connects via the cable into the side through here, but it's so tiny and it feels really nice in your hand. It has this little wheel that you touch here and then move it back and forwards. Um, and it's just a great thing if you're doing selfies and stuff like that, because basically I can just fold the screen up towards me and then stand it on the desk and I've got a great little unit that will work like that. So I really like this. Uh, I'm really happy with how it's made. It's not cheap, um, but, I really like it. So th that's a couple of things that I've bought anyway. Uh, so I'm looking forward to using the Tamron. Like I said, I've already used that before, so I know how good it is. I was amazed with how good it is. Uh, like I said, I'll put up a new video just talking about it because uh, I didn't have the time to do that previously and I'll mix all those other videos up that I used before and make a sort of more one that shows stills and video and the focusing and stuff like that. So stay tuned for that. All right, so let's get started on the first story because we're gonna go through this uh, rumor that is coming up um, very, very soon. Now, I had a discussion yesterday about uh, the Fuji X-T3 and how amazing I thought that release was. And it's interesting, I don't know whether that's directly related to now Sony making a, an announcement um, at photo, uh, before Photokina, because they're saying they're gonna have an announcement on the 16th of, uh, the 18th of September, and also a, co uh, a press conference on the 25th of September, so they're doing two. Now, they are actually now doing a media uh, announcement at Photokina, so that also is different to what they were saying a week ago, where they weren't going to have any announcement at all. So, I'm not sure, I don't think that the Canon and Nikon announcements probably shifted them at all. They may have heard what, uh, well they would have heard because the rumors have been out for a little bit, what the Fuji had actually announced and the price point that that Fuji came in. And I think the Fuji probably uh, is more of a direct threat to say Sony than what the uh, Canon and Nikon is. And I'd love you when we come back into the chat if you agree with what I'm saying here, but I think the Fuji is a far better release than either of the, uh, the, the Canon or the Nikon announcements, because uh, the Fuji is actually a really solid announcement for APS-C that Sony, I, I think, have to answer, uh, because that camera clearly is, is much better than what you could get uh, for instance, in your A6500 now. Um, so it, it's interesting, and I'm not sure whether that sort of made Sony move uh, and announce this earlier. Uh, let me know what you think in the chat, because I'd just be curious. It was interesting that they announced it, though, the same day that that Fuji announcement has, has been made. Uh, but let's look at this, because I'll bring it over, and then we can look at it. Um, so they're saying it's an SR5. Well, it, it has been confirmed now because it's, it's down the bottom uh, that they're actually gonna have an announcement. But they're basically saying that uh, there'll be a big announcement around um, uh, September the 18th and a press conference on September the 25th, probably to show what they're announced. Or are they going to do this as two separate announcements? Announce something on September the 18th and then also announce 
something new on September the 25th. And, and that's what we're going to have to wait and see. Um, but they're on, I think, first thing in the morning. So they're saying they're on now at 10 o'clock. Um, that's when the announcement's going to be at uh, Photokina. So it's, it's going to be interesting. Now, they're also saying down here, this is what Sony Alpha rumors are saying, on September the 14th, they're saying they expect a new pro camcorder. So that's going to be the first announcements So that they're saying. They're also saying only a very small chance to get the new A7S III. Um, September the 18th, they're saying a major E-mount event, maybe a new high-end APS-C E-mount camera and or the new A7S III. And September the 25th at 10 o'clock Berlin time at Photokina, uh, maybe they will show the products announced on the on September the 18th. Maybe they have some additional de uh, gear. And just to expand this before I sort of go through the A7 announcement, um, there's, this is the rumor summary. So if we look at the rumor summaries here, they're saying high-end APS-C camera, which I'll, I'll talk to you about in a minute, to be announced at Photokina, not an A6500, but a completely new kind of model. This is rumored to be a, a mini Sony A9, 20 frames per second, 4K 60p, and improved AF. That's a direct answer to the uh, Fuji camera. So that's really interesting. Now, the A7S III is 90% likely to be announced within one to two months. 4K 60p, 5.6 million dot EVF, new color science, and whoopee do, I can't believe this if this is true, fully articulated screen. Um, and new Zeiss fixed lens full frame camera with autofocus uh, to be announced on September the 27th. So that's a separate type camera. Lens rumors are that there's a Sony 135mm 1.8 GM. Uh, that'll be a beautiful lens, I would think. Uh, there's also a Sony 24 1.4 GM. That's meant to be announced after, after, after Photokina. They're saying that the Sony 135 will be announced at Photokina. Uh, Sony APS-C mount lenses uh, to be announced with a new E-mount camera. Maybe Voigtlander FE lenses coming. Probably a new 50mm 1.4 E-mount from Sigma. Highly likely a new 70 to 200 2.8 E-mount lens from Sigma. And a new Zeiss Batis 40mm uh, f2.0. So, this is really interesting because... The specs that you're talking about there for the A, uh, that new A7000 camera are a direct answer to what the Fuji camera has. And that, that's the interesting thing. And I'm wondering now whether that's definitely pushed that forward because of the Fuji announcement yesterday. It just seems, is it a coincidence that they were both announced on the same day and that was announced after that Fuji uh, announcement had been made? Um, so that's a really interesting thing. And the A7 three s3 i still don't believe there's that i'm hoping that sony brings it out soon because i'd like to buy that camera um but i still don't believe sony are in a rush to release that camera because unfortunately for us the nikon and canon announcements weren't enough to make sony threatened with what's being released uh the fuji definitely the fuji is a direct uh competitor now to the a6500 and like I said at the moment the Fuji is definitely better than the a6500 um, it hasn't got IBIS but overall that camera is is better I believe on the specs we'd have to wait and see how it functions but you know that that's the interesting thing with that with the a7s3 though there's nothing can be close to that because at the moment the a7 III is better I believe better than the Nikon announcement or the Canon announcement now Canon users or Nikon uh, users may disagree with me on that, but I think it is. I think the A7 III is still a better camera than what those two cameras are announced. So unfortunately, this is why I said competition is very good for us. And we basically, we need that competition to make Sony do something. I think the A7 S III has been sitting there for a while, um, although I think they're still waiting on that EVF, which is you know a, a meant to be announced fully in November. But they still don't have anything a, a to directly compete to, so there's no rush yet on that. So I wouldn't be surprised if they don't announce that at all at Photokina. This is my thinking at the moment. I think Photokina is going to show the new A uh, A7000, and I think the announcement that you have at Photokina will show that but I think it's going to show something like the Sony 135mm. Um, and I think that's what's going to happen. Because I think 
Sony are still probably going to hold out for the A7S3 announcement until later on in the year. And even Sony Alpha rumors were saying one to two months away. Um, so I think that's probably what's going to happen. And we can have a, a chat about that uh, in the live discussion when we finish going through these these rumors. Um, but, you know, it, it, it's interesting. Now, just to go back to a couple of things that I found this morning uh, showing about the Fuji, I just wanted to quickly go through this with you because it's an extra to what I showed yesterday. Um, and then I'll just show you a result that we're, we're talking about here. But the things that they've added, obviously, are the power through USB-C. It's, it has meant, it's meant to have much better IAF and AF tracking has been improved. And that was showed if you watch some of the reviews now online. Uh, it does also have autofocus and metering independently. The previous model didn't have that. Um, DP review writes, in our initial use of the camera, we've been very impressed with the new autofocus system. Uh, finding it to be very fast and effective at tracking subjects, in some ways very similar to the 3D tracking on Nikon's digital SLRs, and the 3D tracking is excellent uh, on those cameras. The video autofocus too has, has made a massive leap. Um, you're also dealing with the 4K 60p 420 internal. That's again amazing. Um, and it's 422, 10-bit 422, 4K 60p external. So that's another great feature as well with that camera. Another amazing thing too, which I hope Sony answers is, it does have dual card slots, uh, which I hope Sony has in that. I'm not confident they'll do that, but I really do hope uh, that they put that into there. Um, firmware updates, well, obviously, they've always been good with their firmware updates. Now, this is what I wanted to show you, though, because... It's saying in here that the ISO has been improved. Now, when I was looking at uh, all of the uh, reviews that had come out, that this new backside illuminated sensor is basically giving you about two stop advantage over the previous model, um, which, is, which is a really big jump. I mean, often you ha you're lucky if you get a one stop uh, advantage in a new camera, but they're saying this is about a two stop advantage uh, on this um, sensor. So we don't know yet whether it's a Sony one. I don't think it's going to be because it's a 36, uh, 26 megapixel and that just doesn't seem to be what Sony would produce. They're always around that 24, but whether it's a special one Sony have made, I'm not sure. But check out this. It's, it's saying here too that uh, this was allegedly shot at ISO 8000 uh, from DP Review. Now this is the image. Let me just bring this up. Um, so this is the image that was shot. Now... Let me just uh, bring this down a little bit. I wonder if I can make it smaller here. Yeah, I can. Let me just make this smaller. And a bit smaller. All right, so this was an image that was shot at um, the DP Review. It's meant to be 8000 ISO. Uh, and that's clearly, look, you can do that in the Sony cameras too, but it's showing how much it's improved because the low light performance previously on the uh, Fuji cameras, I didn't think was very good. Um, but this was shot at 8,000. Now they said they've deliberately underexposed this to keep your highlight details as well as, you know, you keep all these lovely highlight details. And the edited view is basically this one. Uh, so you can see there when it's been lifted and uh, brought up. I'll leave the link to this down below so you can have a look at these yourself to let me know what you think. Um, but the recovery is pretty good there. I mean, that, that's actually not bad at all if you're dealing with lifting the shadows without showing much noise at all. Looking at the image, uh, it seems to be um, quite good. So let me know what you think about that in the chat because I'm, I'm curious to know what you guys think about that. So clearly, this is why I'm saying that I think... Um, Fuji really have lifted their game, and this is why Sony may have to answer um, that uh, that camera, and that might be why they're doing it uh, with the new A7000, if, if that's what's going to be announced um, shortly. Uh, so that's that story. So I just wanted to bring that up. Oh, let me just check, too, whether there was anything else in the Fuji that I wanted to discuss with you. Um, oh, yeah, I did. I wanted to say that. So that's saying that it's 8000 ISO. Um, and they're also saying that it has a 1 six, uh, 60th of a sense, sensor readout on that sensor. That's why you've been able to get up to that one, uh, 30 frames per second. Uh, it's not as fast as the A9 though, so I still don't know what the rolling shutter is going to be like. 
Um, but I think the A7 III is around about 1 uh, or 1 I think. Um, so the rolling shutter for the um, electronic shutter on this should be better than what you're getting on something like uh, the A7 III. It definitely will be better than what you're getting on the A6500. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how that is. It's not an A9, but it's still, it's, it's pretty good. And it's going to be interesting to see what the A7000 uh, has uh, in that regard. And the last thing I sort of wanted to mention too was um, that it does do 4K 60p. Uh, and it has 12 stops of dynamic range. There's only 20 minutes of shooting though, and I've mentioned to you this before that I'd be happy even if Sony gave me five minutes because my average shot duration in 4K is 10 seconds. So I'm not fussed at that at all. I mean, other videographers may be, but there's no way I'm going to photograph or film uh, long events using 4K 60p because it's way too big. The file size is just way too large. The second I'm starting to do that, I'm shooting long events in 1080p. Uh, I'm not shooting them in 4K. So I'd be happy with having a 20 minutes shooting at 4K 60p. That wouldn't bother me at all. I'd be happy if Sony gave me five minutes. Uh, but that's that's just what I'd be happy. Obviously in the A7S III, that's gonna be different because that is a true video camera. You would expect that to shoot long periods of 4K without overheating. I think that's locked to 20 minutes because they don't want it to overheat. Um, so that that's the reason why um, that's happening. But I think the main difference too between say uh, what Fuji have done here and what Canon and Nikon have done I think the processor is the killer thing that they've put in this camera. This four core processor that they've put in there has allowed it to have dual card slots. It's allowed it to do 4K 60p, 10 bit internal. Um, and that's the thing that obviously Sony is gonna do when they bring out a new A7000 is to allow it to have, uh, a, well, it'll be a much faster processor which will run cooler uh, and it'll allow it to have things like this 4K 60p internal and, and stuff like that. So that's the Fuji, but let's look at um, the Sony because I'll bring this up and we can have a look at what the, the rumors are saying here. Um, it's definitely, I think it's definitely got to have the Z battery. I, I think that's got to be a given. If, if they don't do that, they really are letting it down. Now that's one of the downfalls of the Fuji was the battery life still is meant to be terrible. And a few people commented on that yesterday to say how bad the battery life actually is. So that, that's a real problem for Fuji. You know, uh, I think Jordan said he, he used six batteries in the one day of shooting and that, you know, that's nuts. If they can put the Z battery into the A7000, that thing will go all day and, and that will be incredible if you're dealing with a Z battery. Now, obviously, if you're going to put a Z battery into this camera, well then the, this grip mount is gonna have to be so much larger. Uh, so that's the reason why it's probably going to change. I don't think you're gonna see a total new body design, you may, Sony may just do that. I don't think that's gonna be the case. I think it's more than likely going to be uh, the uh, handle or the grip is extended to give you this Z battery to fit into that. But let's wait and see, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Um, the other thing too that they're saying on here is that, um, it's not saying the other things, but they were saying in it that it's going to have the, um, 20 frames per second, so it's gonna have the same shooting as the Sony A9, the ability to do that, but it'll be in crop mode, obviously, which could be a real advantage for sports because you've got that extra reach. Um, it's also going to have the focus, basically, of the A9 as well. I'm not sure whether it'll be as good. It's gonna be interesting to see what they hold back. Uh, and whether the electronic shutter is still gonna be as good as that, I'm not sure what the sense is gonna be, um, but it's gonna be, a, I, I think they're gonna have to have a really exciting announcement to match what the Fuji has just done. If they can give us 4K 60p, I think that's what we're gonna get now in this, but they can't give you everything that they would give you in um, the A7S III, or no one would buy the A7S III. Um, so I think it's gonna be interesting. The other thing too is what price point are they gonna bring this in at? They can't make it too close to the A7 III or people would probably just move up to that. So it's probably gonna to have to match what the X-T3 is around about that $1,500 mark, I think, uh, which will be a really interesting price point if they can give us uh, 4K. Uh, love it if they could give us 10-bit internal. That's gonna be interesting to see what they do give us in that respect. Um, but I think this is the camera that's going to be announced first and then we're gonna see the A7S III uh, a little bit later on 
uh, down the track. Let me know if you think that's a, a reasonable um, summary in the comments because we'll go through that when we go to the chat. Um, the last story is I just wanted to show this, the cannon size difference between the EOS R and the A7 III, um, which is interesting. And if you're talking about the lenses, um, look at the size of the Canon. Let me just reduce this in size. Oh, no, I can just bring it down a bit. No, we'll reduce it a little bit. Oop, wrong one. Let me just bring that back up. Let me go back to here. Go to there. All right, and then let me just move this. Look at the difference in the size of the Canon. I mean, look, you're dealing with an F2 lens there. This is the 2470. Why are they saying F2? It's not F2. It's an F2.8. That's interesting. Um, so that's the G Master, and this is the Canon lens. That's a monster. Uh, that would be stunning, though. I mean, the, the one thing I can say about the Canon releases, their lenses are amazing, and that is one thing where I'm very jealous of the Canon users now. Their lenses are incredible. You have this little thing here that you can program. Um, the mounts that are coming out also have amazing things, like you can drop the internal uh, NDs internally. Uh, they're, they're incredible. But the lenses are just beautiful, but you'd have to want to carry the weight around. I think the beauty of this lens, though, is it's like carrying around a, a set of primes uh, on its own. So, you know, you've got the 28 to 70, basically in primes looking at that F2 rating. Uh, beautiful, but look at the size difference. It is a massive looking lens. Um, this down here is a 24 to 105. Uh, the Canon is slightly larger, I think. Um, only a little bit though, they're pretty similar, but it, they are, it is slightly larger. Um, it's interesting how people were bagging Sony for their lens sizes. <laughs> um, the Canon 51.2 against the Sony 51.4. Again though, you'd expect the 1.2 to be larger due to it's a 1.2 uh, lens, but it's giving you an idea about the size difference. Uh, you can also see the difference in the size of the body as well. Um, you know, the, the, the grip particularly is really large in the Canon. I think that would be quite nice to hold. Um, but it's interesting to look at that, uh, those pictures there. Um, so that's about all for news and things like that. But let's open it up to questions. Um, because I want to go through all that with you. So fire away. I'm going to go back and then we can have a chat. Um, from here, so let me come down here. Uh, Brian said, I caught a live stream, it's been a few months. Hey David, loving watching all your latest rumor mill uh, musings. I agree with most of what you're saying. Oh, it's just jumped, I hate that. Uh, where are we? Uh, it does that sometimes, it just jumps to the bottom and it's a pain in the backside to go back. Um, I agree with most of your viewpoints as well. Um, this year has absolutely been packed with cameras and, and already NAB 218 is just around the corner. It's madness. I know it's been just crazy over the last few weeks. It's nuts. We've still got the GH5 uh, full frame announcement yet. Hits are great content. Thanks so much, mate. Brian said Canon is better than Sony, you Sony people. <laughs> um, Peregrine said, Fuji lowered price by 100 for Americans, but upped it for 300 for Australians. <laughs> yeah, that'd be right. We well, always get ripped off here. Uh, let me just clear this questions thing. Um, comment, culture, beauty. Um, oh yeah, the Black Magic here. That's another camera that also uh, I showed the other day. If you want to go back through a couple of videos, I did show that. Peter said, I was expecting the A7000 to be about 2K, but with the X-T3, I think 1,500... Uh, might be less now. Yeah, well, uh, uh, Peter, I think you're right. I think they've got to try and match that. They also, I don't know if they're going to have that price the same money as the A7 III. It's going to be interesting to see where they price that. Um, I think it's probably going to match the X-T3. I would expect it to anyway. Um, no mention, though, whether it's going to have an articulating screen, and I so hope it does. The only one I've seen so far is the A7S III, and that's interesting. I thought if any camera is going to have the articulating screen, you'd expect it to be the A7000, not the A7S III. So that, that was a really interesting rumor. Um, Stacy said... Um, Oh, Common Culture said, oh, interesting. Thanks for taking the effort to the show. Oh, thank you so much. Stacey said, just received my second A7 III 
and uh, and nothing I've seen the past couple of weeks has made me think I had bad choice. Stacy, there is that is an amazing camera. I adore the A7 III. And that's still going to be an amazing camera for a, a number of uh, years yet, what it offers in that camera. Really, the only thing that it misses, if you were talking about it being perfect for me to be shooting uh, video, is that it doesn't have 4K 60p and an articulating screen. I mean, they're, they're really the only things in that. The, everything else on that camera is amazing. Low light, dynamic range is fantastic. Um, video is, is really good on that. Focusing is just outstanding. It, it's a great camera. I certainly wouldn't regret buying it. Um, Bike said, looking forward to a very interesting month. I know it is. It's going to be uh, really exciting. Um, MBW said, looks like it was his speaker or subwoofer. Is that the speaker on the side over there? Now, these are Fostec speakers. I'll show you. Because someone asked me about that the other day. Um, those are just Fostec studio speakers. So I, I use these because I'm a musician as well. Uh, I also like to, I write my own music and, and stuff like that. But I, these are Fostec speakers that I just use for the studio. So when I'm doing my music, that's why I bought the Universal Audio so I can directly plug into there with my guitar. Um, so that's what that's for. So they're just studio monitor speakers. Um... James said, uh, chat being, la stop being lazy and hit the like button. <laughs> Show David some love. I love it. Thanks so much. I do appreciate when you uh, hit the like button. It makes other people watch it, which is uh, great too. Um, Stacy said, I have not been getting notified of your shows. You know, I, don't know, I don't know what YouTube's doing, Stacy, because it's not notifying and that's the annoying thing. That's why I've asked people to hit that up button, like button, because it lets people know I'm online. Um, YouTube's been a bit iffy about that. I don't know why. Um, comment said, liking the uh, camera angles over here. Um, Steve's in here. G'day, Steve. Um, Aaron said, I just traded up my Sony 24105 for the Tamron 28 to 75. Yep. Like I said to you, and, and the funny thing was that when I bought that, well, it wasn't when I bought the lens. Uh, when Tamron lent me that lens to do those early reviews, if you go back through the reviews, you'll see the, the flack that I copied, people calling me a liar for how well it was working, uh, that I was paid by Tamron to do the reviews, and I was going, oh my God, I can only base the review on what my lens was like. Um, I, I mean, I even did video, which I'm going to put in that new review, I even did video showing the autofocus and how it worked. And people were still saying I was lying. It was so funny. Um, I, I was lucky. I had one of the lenses that had obviously good firmware for some reason that I didn't have any of those AF issues that the early ones have. But everyone is now saying that has the latest firmware that those um, uh, autofocus issues are gone. So you can safely buy that lens now. Uh, I think the thing for me is, like you all know, and it's funny because people laugh at me for saying I don't have the G Master lenses like the 70 to 200. I use the F4 version or the 2470. It's the weight that I adore about these sort of things. You know, I'm, I'm getting older and I just don't like to lug around really heavy glass, like really heavy glass. I mean, I may buy some primes because I'd love to look at the 105 but then I'll only get that out occasionally, or even the Sony 135 f1.8. But, um, you know, I'm only going to be using that occasionally. It'll stick in my bag and I'll bring out. But if I've got this sort of around me on a strap, or if I'm using it on a gimbal, I want lightweight glass. And the results I've seen, and I actually have seen it because I've shot with it, the results from this are outstanding. Uh, and for the price, you can't beat it. In, in fact, I'd, I would probably get a 70 to 200 if they bought one out as well. I'd love them to bring something like that out that is similar quality, you know, lightweight, and f2.8 that I could use sometimes for my dance uh, shoots that I do and stuff like that where it's more low light. And the 70 to 200 is, is, can be slow sometimes if you're dealing with f4. Um, but, you know, I would, um, the lens is outstanding. So yeah, I can understand why you're saying you've got the 2875. Um, it, uh, I hear it's great on a gimbal, yeah, and I used it on the gimbal and it was amazing. It worked fantastic on the Mosa Aircross. Uh, it would f work great on all of those lighter gimbals because it's only 555 grams. How they can do that on that is amazing. 
Uh, I think it's only a 65 mil um, front. I don't know if it says on it, I can't remember. But I think it's only a 65 mil on the front. Um, but optically, you know, it's fantastic. But like you can see, as we always go back to my brick wall statement, there can be distortion there if you uh, shoot certain things, but I don't shoot brick walls, so it's, it's not an issue for me. And the software corrects for it anyway, Lightroom collects for it anyway, but for what I was shooting, well, it was portraits and things like that, it was outstanding. Um, what else? Uh, are there Lightroom profiles yet for the Tamron? I believe there is Java. I think there is now. I remember seeing it uh, somewhere. Um, Sharbox said, I wish the Tamron was a bit uh, wider. I'm renting the 16 to 35. Well, I've got the 16 to 35 F4 Charbox, so that's not an issue for me. But I would love a, a, um, a wide angle, you know, like a 12 uh, prime, 12 millimeter prime, something like that. Um, Peter said, I've had good luck buying and selling on eBay, except once the used lens arrived with a little mould. Yeah, you've got to be careful. Um, which photo software do you guys use? Photoshop or Lightroom? I use both, Ken, uh, extensively. Um, Terry said, uh, the new plastic are as tough as hell. They are, actually. I have no problem with plastics as long as the moving parts inside are metal. In fact, there are advantages to plastic, no denting uh, for one. Uh, it is also weather sealed too, so that's another good thing with the uh, lens as well. Um, what else have we got? Your, um, <laughs> so your Canon prediction was way off. Uh, the vid, the lenses, the, the thing was too, a, couple, a few people, and I'll sort of explain myself there too. A few people have said that I was a little bit light on with Canon. Um, and when I say, when they say I was light on, it's how much I bagged the Nikons basically. The reason why I, I gave Canon the benefit of the doubt was because they've only released one camera. Now, that's the difference. Nikon have played their hand. They've released both cameras and we know exactly what they've got on both of those cameras. Neither one of those cameras has dual card slots uh, right from the start. And that, that irked me because I, I don't like to shoot with dual card slots, but I'm not gonna go back over that again. But that really bugged me and I, I wasn't happy with the releases that Nikon have announced. After, when I looked at the Canon announcement, uh, their lenses are outstanding. I think they're, they're far better than what the Nikon offerings were for lenses. I, I really do believe the Canon announcement of lenses was way better than what Nikon uh, offered. And this had me thinking that I believe the next model that Canon will announce, because those lenses are so expensive, I believe the next model that Canon will announce will probably be a much better model. Now, I may be proven wrong, but I'm, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt because they haven't played their whole hand yet. Nikon had. Canon Haddon, and that's why I was saying that uh, the Canon, um, I gave the benefit of the doubt. The other thing that I loved on the Canon was the articulating screen. So that was another thing that I really wanted to get, and so that also really appealed to me as well. Remember, it's always a personal judgment that you make. Uh, it's nothing personal against Nikon, I just didn't like what their camera offerings were. And I've explained to people before that it's just hardware at the end of the day and I don't know why people get so upset about it. Um, I just didn't like Nikon's announcement. I didn't like them at all. Um, there was good features, yes, but I just didn't think it was innovative enough. When you look at what Canon had to announce, they were more innovative in what they showed. They had the articulating screen, they had the lenses that had the extra adapter. Their lenses are, are amazing. I mean, the 28 to 70 or whatever it was, F2 is, is just ridiculous. Um, you know, and the 50 1.2, they're all amazing looking lenses. And also, you know, like the little touch screen that it has, or the little touch button that it has on the back of the, um, of the camera on the Canon. And also that it's got that dual pixel AF autofocus that's there as well, and the minus six. I'm not sure if that's really true, but the minus six and also the focusing on the Canon. So that's the reasons why I think the Canon was a better announcement. It's still nowhere near what Sony have to offer, even with the a7 III, I don't believe, but it's still a better announcement. But I do believe Canon are gonna make a better one with their next one. And that's why I was a little bit uh, giving them the benefit of the doubt. Um, 
else have we got? Alan said the 28 to 75 video AF works as good as native. It does, and I was unbelievably happy when I uh, tested that lens when I had the original one from Tamron. That's what people were calling me a liar about, saying that uh, I wasn't telling the truth. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I posted a video of it actually focusing and showing people and they still said it. Um, but yeah, it is. It's. I think it's easily as good as anything I've got native. Uh, it's probably not as fast as the 55, but boy, it's still fast as fast as anything else that I've got on Sony. Um, Carl said that lens was messaging you telepathically. I know it was so funny that I walked in and it was the only one they had. Uh, and I grabbed it straight away. Um, need a Netflix for lens equipment, I wish. Charbox said, uh, I always buy some new cheap electronics when I'm in the USA. It's often cheaper there. And especially now the A6500 or successor to the A mini is probably coming out in the next month or two. Um, Ron said, hey, it's always better to ask the wife for forgiveness than for permission when it comes to camera gear. <laughs> Man, he said that's a sweet, sweet tripod. I know, how good is that little tripod? It is, it's amazing, I love it. Uh, it really is nice. Um, especially if you're doing your selfies and, and you know that sort of stuff with it. Um, Trevor said, for video, is the camera correcting distortion in body? Uh, I think it will in JPEG. It won't obviously, I don't think, in uh, RAW. You'd have to do that in Lightroom. But Lightroom does it automatically if you do it with a, a profile coming in anyway. Um, <laughs> I'm just laughing saying, why is your wife in the corner? You're talking about Susie over there. This is Susie. Um, I use her for all of my studio teaching when I'm showing people lighting techniques and all stuff like that. Uh, so Susie always sits quietly in the corner. And I have a Ken as well. Ken's in the studio. Um, so that's Susie. Um, Brett said, I got no times for prime lens swapping them out in weddings. I use my 70 to 200 and 24 70 and 16 to 35 covers all aspect and all views. I don't really swap them out, Brett, though, because I've, I've usually I've only got on there, which is the Battis, and then on the other camera, I'm using this. So the other camera I use the Sony 35. So one camera I've got the uh, 35 f1.4 and the other camera I've got the Battis 85. I can shoot 80 to 90% of the wedding with that. I very rarely need to go outside of that. Uh, and then occasionally I'll, um, I, I mean I take these in my bag, I'll grab the 70 to 200 f4 and then um, I'll also use um, the 16 to 35 f4 lens if I want to go a little bit wider than that. Uh, you know, um, and they're, they're the sort of lenses that I use. But the the 85 and the 35 sit on those two cameras, and I have it on a belt, a spider holster. I just put them on the belt on either side, and then I can just keep swapping, and that gets me through probably 90% of the wedding. Um, the Fuji's looking pretty impressive. Yes, it does. Um, I agree. Um, MBW said, I definitely agree. The video features basically combat the A7S III directly. Yeah, and that's what's going to be interesting to see how this is. Um, I think the Fuji is almost like what the A7 III was, that announcement, that it's that sort of game-changing in the features that are offered. Um, it's going to be interesting now to see what Sony tackle that and, and what they come out with. Uh, I'm pretty excited to see what they'll offer. Um, Fuji and possible full-frame Panasonic are the biggest threats to Sony. Uh, pot, yes, I, you're probably right there, Tony. Um, Peter said, I'm still looking for a second shooter, backup stills camera for the a7 III. I was thinking a used a7R2. That's what I also have. I have an a7R2 uh, with APS-C lens uh, or the new a7000. When I, I do take my a7R2, but I don't use it much at all now due to the fact that it only has the one card slot, so I'm reluctant to actually use it much. Uh, what I do is I use it for, because it has the massive resolution, I use the a7R2 for um, some amazing shots that I think they might want to blow up extremely large. 
But at the same time now, I am always so conscious of what happened to me when that car corrupted. I'll take the same shot quickly with the A7 III or the A9 so that I have a backup in case if the card fails on the A7R2. So I wouldn't be willing, willing anymore to use the A7 III, A7R2 as a primary uh, camera. As a backup, you might be okay, but as long as you're not using it, say, for the first kiss and then you have a corruption and that's the camera you're using at that time and the card corrupts. This is the problem with it. And this is why I say to people that, that have the argument, of, I've got two cameras, but you're probably not gonna be shooting both cameras at the same time. And if, if it's a very important moment, like the first kiss and that card corrupts, it's gone. Uh, so this is, this is the judgment call that you have to make. Um, so Peter, I'd probably wait and just see what's announced. You might be better off with an A7000. You're that close now to seeing what's announced here. An A7000 may have dual card slots. Um, so I'd wait and see. A9R we're not going to see for till next year sometime, Arthur, I wouldn't think. Um, Mel said, if the, a, if the X-T3 was 35 full frame, that would have been given an A7 III worthy competitor. It would have been. Uh, if Yeah, it would definitely. Well, definitely would be better in the video department because it's got 4K60, but it hasn't got um, IBIS. Um, Kensky said, I agree that Fuji's a full middle op opponent. And this is a great thing, guys. This is why... You know, some people get threatened, but I, it's a great thing because you want Sony to be pushed. This is what we want because then you know the next generation that's going to come out is just going to up it again. And we're in this race then again. Sony, have, unfortunately, and we're lucky because they've given us great cameras without really having that competition. But now that they're starting to get competition uh, there, just wait till you see what Sony, uh, you know, give us. I, I'm really excited about it. Any tips on how to return from the camera shop with four cameras? <laughs> no, the only one, the worst one I did was when I went to buy the D4S and, and that was, I think, seven or $8,000. Uh, and then I had to tell Kerry that one. Um. Uh. I'm just checking what people are saying. Mel said, the main problem with Canicon uh, barring purposely crippling some of the features is very weak. Yeah, I, and I, I looked at that later on too and that's a very disappointing crop. Uh, putting a 1.7 crop on that, basically it becomes an APS-C camera, uh, is Canon holding back again. And I just don't understand why these camera makers do it. If they released an amazing uh, like they're trying to protect their digital SLRs. This is what they're doing. But I don't understand the bottom line because if they made a great camera that was brilliant, they would sell so many of these, it wouldn't matter about them protecting their uh, ultimate cinema line because they would sell the bucket load of these things. And, and I just don't understand their thinking. Uh, Trev said, a GM 135 1.8 will cost an absolute fortune, but a lot of people have been missing their 135 aim out. Yeah, and it's going to be interesting too to see how much better that will be than, or if it is even as good as this, the 135 Sigma. Um, so we have to wait and see. Um, MBW said, I'm surprised they will go out of the way and put out a flip screen on the A7S III. Well, it's only a rumor, but I'll be surprised too. Um, what else have we got? If the Sony has good IBIS, I would go that route, but the Fuji X-T3 looks amazing. The Sony IBIS is actually pretty good. I'm using the Sony cameras now with IBIS to handhold video often, um, and it, has, it is actually very usable. It's not GH5 level, but it is that I can get by without having a tripod or a monopod. And I've showed that before, and it is actually quite usable. It's, it's a lot better than people give it credit for. Um, Mel said, uh, Digic 8 is woefully weak. And I think this is the thing that Nikon and uh, Canon have found. It's the processes that are causing the issue. This is why you're only getting the single card slots, I believe. And it's even the issue with the latest Sonys, that you've only got one uh, fast card and the other one is the slower card. And I think it's the processes just can't handle it. 
Uh, obviously, the Fuji processor, this new one, is a beast. Um, you know, having that four-core processor in there has made all the difference. Um, and that's obviously what you'll see in a new A7000 or a new A7S 3 will have a new processor. Um, Long Rider said, you're 100% right. Sony made no announcement in response to Canon and Nikon, but when Fuji came out uh, uh, with a winner, Sony jumped. Yeah, and I, I'm, look, I'm not 100% sure, but it, it just, it, is it a coincidence or it just seems funny that it was that day after Fuji made such an amazing announcement. Delta Dave said, uh, look for the A7S release uh, to be around Black Friday. Interesting. Price, we still don't know. Um, but if it's the if you're talking about the A7000, they have to make that competitive with um, the Fuji. So you, you know, I'm hoping it's around about 1500 US. Um, Ron said, did Panasonic also announce they were making a full frame as well? Yeah, th there's been announcements, but I haven't heard anything official yet. Um, yes, and that's also saying if Panasonic fixes their autofocus issues, because it is crap compared to what Sony offer. Uh, Kenneth said A7000 4K 60p internal 10 bit, A7S3 4K 60 internal 10 bit. Uh, well, it will be, you would think. Hopefully, it'll be internal though. I'm hoping. I'd love to see it internal. Love to see the skin tones at 8000. Yeah, well, we still have to see that, don't we? Um, the other thing Peter said also, I know Fuji's um, system is still based on FAT32, and that's correct. It gives you chunks, and that will be annoying for video because I'm not sure it might be four gigabyte or something, I don't know, but there's a, a time that you'll get chunks of video, so it's not just one long video, you'd have all these chunks and it, it makes it a pain. Um, Gerald's here, g'day Gerald. Um, Coda says, as a consumer competition makes me feel great, and I, I'm all for it, I, I really am. Would be nice to get rid of that 30 minute time limit thing. Well, well, apparently the rules are changing next year, so they may, but I bet you any money, no one will, Fuji probably would. Um, Fuji probably would give it as a firmware update. They're probably the only company that would do it though. Uh, Sony and Canon and Nikon probably will make you buy another camera. Because uh, it's only firmware stopping it, it's just that they don't want to pay that licensing fee to make it so it's not uh, classed as a uh, video camera. Um, Peter said, I love the Panasonic cameras, but that full frame will be expensive. If it has 8K video, like rumoured, I bet 3,500 at least, maybe four. Um, Charbuck said, five minutes, I need to film for two hours in 4K 60SE. I'd never do that. I'd always be filming in 1080. But then you have another usage Charbox. You need to wait and see what the A7S III gives you. Um, Langston said two hours, um, I know I'd never ever film anything like that because those file sizes would be horrific. Um, Peter said I shoot only one of my GH5 for three hours straight at a wedding. Um, I did that too, I used to use the GH5 but I still did it in 1080p. The, the file sizes are just too big for me to use. Uh, if you want to, I suppose, uh, and you need it, well, then you, the, the camera's not right for you. You need something like a GH5, but um, I would never want to deal with those file sizes. Um, Vinny has said, 4K60, IBIS, flip-out screen, dual card slot, 120 frames per second, 1080, no cropping, 24 megapixels on stills, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, 10-bit dynamic range, S-Log, mic and headphone jacks, USB charging, and bam. <laughs> That might be the A7S III. I don't think you'll get all that, though, in the A7000. I'd be surprised. Wouldn't it be amazing if you did? Uh, so the X-T3 recording at 4K 60p for five minutes. No, it's 20, I believe. Um, what else have we got? Just trying to see, should I get, Ryan said, should I get the A7000 or the A7 III? Well, Ryan, you're that close to, what, to seeing what this announcement is. Just wait, wait and see. I still love the look of full frame. And I, and I know people are saying that the, the Fuji is still nice, but it's still an APS-C look. It still has a different look than what full frame will give you. If you're shooting at 1.4 full frame, there's nothing quite like it unless you go, obviously, to uh, medium format. But the, the, it, it does have a different look to it. 
So it depends what you want. If you want that full frame look, you'd go for the A7 III. Uh, APS-C can also have an advantage too if you need reach. For things like sports, for things like wildlife, APS-C can be fantastic. Um, if you're a portrait shooter, I still think full frame is the way to go, but that's the way I think and the looks that I like. Remember, this is always a personal choice. You may be happy with APS-C, and that's fine. If you like that uh, Super 35 look, that's fine. I love the full frame look, so I will always be shooting with the full frame if, if I can. Uh, APS-C would be my second camera. Um, but wait and just see, wait, see what they offer with the A7000. It's only a, a couple of weeks away. Um, Peter said, I think the uh, new high-end APS-C camera absolutely needs an A9 body. I don't think that's gonna happen, Peter. May, uh, it'll be interesting to see though. Um, I think it's gonna be 1500. Uh, uh, that's what I'm hoping, I hope they match that. It's really good that Fuji have put out that camera before because now it puts a bit of pressure on, on Sony. Uh, it, it's actually really good. Creative Experience said, love my GH5. I liked it too when I had one. Um, Lyle said that the thing that I'm waiting on to switch from uh, Canon to Sony is a flip out screen. Um, I'm hoping one of these next two cameras has it too though, Lyle, I really am. Um, Gerald said, I agree the A7000 first to count a Fuji X-T3 and the A7S3 later when the 5.6 million dot EVF is ready. Yeah, and they were, I've said all along that that wasn't ready until November. Um, oops. Um, where were we? There we go. Uh, uh, I'm De Brown said, my wife can't tell the difference in the cameras and the lenses. I just got an Atmos Shogun and she thought it was my small focus HD. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's a crack up. Um, has said, is the 35 millimeter uh, Distagon lens, uh, it's the, yes, it's the Sony. Yeah. Let me just go full frame. This is my, probably my favorite lens. Um, I love it because it has the clickless wheel uh, on here. Now for video, that's just the best thing ever because you have this de-click and then you can change your aperture. So if, if I'm walking in between, um, say inside a, a church and then going outside, I can just change the aperture quickly like that just on the thing and I, I adore that lens. It's more expensive, uh, way more expensive than the other offerings out there, but I do absolutely love it and I'd buy it for that feature alone. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's probably my favorite lens, that with the Batis. Um, A7 III versus ESR, definitely the A7 III. Um, Terry said, when flogging the new camera that doesn't have an articulated screen, you can always use your smartphone over Wi-Fi. Uh, yeah, but it just, it's just buggy. Uh, and it, it's slow, and, and then you've still got to hold another thing, and it's a pain. I don't want that. I want an articulating screen, Terry. Uh, camera bags, uh, I use um, Think Tank camera bags. I've reviewed them before. Uh, they're my main ones that I use when I'm going around. Um, but I do have other camera bags as well. I should bring a review and show all of them, actually. But I use Think Tank uh, roller bags. Uh, the airport ones, and uh, I've got four. I've actually got four Think Tank bags, uh, the big rollers. Um, here's a thought: Sony A7S III with Canon's twenty four seventy. I know, wouldn't you love that? Um, let me just come down to see if anyone else is mentioning much. Imo said, what do you think will appear at Photokina? Well, the, that's what I'm saying. I think at this stage, it's probably only gonna be the A7000 and the 135mm uh, f1.8 lens. I think that's what Sony's going to announce. Uh, I think we're gonna to have to wait. There's no, Like I said, I don't believe the A7S III is gonna come out. It may, they may just surprise us, but I don't think there's any need for Sony to do that at this stage because there's no competition out there. It depends too. if. Panasonic announce uh, an amazing full frame, and let's keep our fingers crossed that that's what happens. Sony may announce the A7S III. Um,
Ron said, uh, had a card corrupt once when I was transferring footage and could not recover any, never going through that again and telling a client. And this is the thing, you know, that th this is why it really just amazes me. And this is your choice. This is your choice as a, as a professional photographer. I believe that you are there to serve the client. And that's the thing that you've got to get off. Get off your egos, get off everything else. I've never had a car corrupt. I thought exactly like that. And I've changed my whole thinking after that happened to me. If I'd had to tell the client that I couldn't deliver their concert photos, which was a one-off concert, I was paid big money to do this. Um, if I'd had to tell that client that I could not deliver those photos, my reputation would have been screwed. I was covered in my contract to say that hardware failure, I would have been covered. But imagine me going up to that client and saying, I can't deliver your images, I've had a corrupt card. Do you think that they're gonna be sympathetic? when all of their parents that were expecting to get images from that concert, they were expecting to get images to use for their um, uh, advertising and everything else, they're not gonna give two hoots about your card. I was saved because the A9 had a second card. That was the thing that saved me in this, and I'd never had a card corrupt before, and it changed my thinking completely. I was so blasé about it because I'd never had one, and I can only talk to you from my experience, and the interesting thing is that I've had so many people when I mentioned I'll never shoot uh, with one card again saying, oh, you're being stupid, you know, and all this sort of stuff, but your client has to come first that you've got a service to give, and, they, they, and then they start going back, you only had one film camera, but Years ago, you had cars that didn't have seat belts, and now you have to wear them. We, we've, have, we've improved. Technology has improved. Client expectations have, in, have, have increased. And if you're telling your client that you can't deliver images because you've had a corrupt card, you're going to lose the referrals from that client. Your reputation will be damaged. And I can tell you I'm never going to have that happen to me again. All I have to have is a card that has a second card, and it's on backup to JPEG. And at least I know that I can then get something usable off that card. Now, if you're a professional and you don't do that, well, I think you're playing Russian roulette. And it's only a matter of time until something happens to you. And it was always on my mind, because I did use that backup device, but it was always on my mind uh, that it could happen, but I was blasé about it, like most people are, saying they've only got one card slot in there. And it really was... I was blasé about it. Now I'm never gonna let it happen again because it happened to me in a paid job. And I was so thankful that I had that second card. If I didn't have that, I don't know how I could have, I, I just couldn't have faced the client. And I'm never ever gonna let that happen again. So I'm never ever gonna shoot a paid job with a single card again. I just won't do it. Um, and I agree with you, Ron, and that, that's the thing, you know, never going to go through that again telling a client I did not have their footage of their wedding. And, th and that's the exact point that I've said. How can you tell a bride, I haven't got your images? Just think about it. How could you do that? And people are going to say it's not going to happen. I said that and it happened to me. Uh, it's like playing Russian roulette. Trust me, it's not worth the, the stress and the damage of the reputation that it would give you. Um... Brett said, uh, people seem to forget uh, the in terms of 4K video Sony, the only one that shoots 6K and then down samples to 4K giving better results. Yeah, and that's true. The 6K down to 4K does give you amazing sharp video. Um, thought it was called the A6700. Well, the rumor is A7000 because it is quite a drastic change. Um, I so said, do you think the A7S will be announced in September? I don't think so. I think it, it probably is going to be October. But it might depend on what Panasonic announce. Um, Jim said, cheers, good day, Jim. Jeffrey, oh. Where was it? Jeffrey said, good day. When you buy a new camera, just tell Kerry that you won't buy Milo. <laughs> <laughs> or Coronas for a month. Happy Friday. I love your show. Very fair Canon views. Thank you. Canon R and Nikon Z are not competition for Sony Z series, but the Fujifilm is good competition. Yep, I agree totally. Tony said, hi, David. I know that you use two cameras to do fusion work for weddings. Is it possible uh, to do it with just one A7 III? No, because I need one on a gimbal and you can't shoot still photography really on a gimbal. It just doesn't work. It's too awkward. 
Um, so the fusions, I'm holding the, uh, the video camera is recording continuously, and then I'm basically holding in the other hand and just shooting away. Um, so that's the way I do that. I'll, I'll, I'm going to make a video talking about it. Um, Jim said, let's start a rumor. Rumors do become reality. So Sony A7 <laughs> Mark IV will be a 30 megapixel sensor and weather sealed. Oh boy, I'm not going to start that. Hi from Perth. Um, favorite camera bag with space for a 17 inch laptop. I'll show you. Hang on, stay there. screen. So these are basically the bags that I use. This is the smaller one though. This is the airport. This I love this one though because it has the four wheels on it. This is amazingly uh, great to move around. It's fantastic. I adore it. They have the locks in the back. Uh, I know this one doesn't. It's the other ones. Um, I think it's got a lock inside here actually but I really adore these, and I've had these for years, and they're still as good as the day that I've actually bought them. Uh, fantastic. Now, for my uh, computer, I use this bag. Now, I, I don't, they don't make that, well, they, this was Carter. Oops, this was Carter. That wasn't a lens, it was actually my uh, little, what's her name thing? Alien. Um, this was Carter. And I'm not sure now who makes it. Someone might be able to tell me in the chat. I did forget. They are made in another brand. But this is the one that I use um, to take around because I love the backpack on this. It's the most comfortable bag I've ever used because it, it, it conforms to your back. It's got a steel frame that actually sits inside here. Well, it's not steel. It's aluminium. Um, I, I adore it. It has your parts down the bottom down here for uh, all of your camera gear. Um, but it, it's fantastic. You can put a tripod in. That's that's my favourite one uh, that I use. I have a few others as well. Um, I have a little bumblebee which is similar to that. Um, but that's my favourite backpack that will carry a 17 inch. I thought that was a lens that dropped. <laughs> I'll show you that. Have a look at this guy. How cool is this? How good is it? It's all made from car parts. I bought this in Thailand. Uh, it's cool, isn't it? A little alien. Um, let me just come back to here. Oops. Um, do you shoot raw to both cards? No, I shoot raw on the fast card and I shoot JPEG uh, on the second card. The JPEG is good enough. My exposures are usually pretty close. Um, it's only occasionally where I really underexpose. And even then I could get a usable file from a JPEG if I had to. Uh, remember the JPEG is just to get me out of trouble in case if there's an issue. Um, so yeah, I shoot raw and then JPEG. So my JPEG file is the backups uh, that I could use in case of an emergency. Um, I'm also finding the more, the, the JPEGs are so good now, I'm often just using the JPEG files anyway, and I'm going back to the raw files if I need to edit extensively. Uh, but usually the JPEGs are amazing straight out of the A9 or the A7 III, or the A7R III uh, amazing JPEGs as well. But yeah, I'm using raw plus JPEG. Um... Then I said, I saw on someone's YouTube channel uh, that it's best to keep cloud storage, uh, find a way to upload your photos automatically in case of corruption. Yeah, but the thing is, that th this is the thing though, that you could get a problem. So, um, someone just said they use Wi-Fi for backup. Yes, but it's not, it, it, there still can be issues there. You can lose your Wi-Fi signal. There might be something goes wrong there. I just don't want to have anything happen. All I need is a camera with two cards and it's done. That's all you have to do, you know, and, and that's the thing that you've got to understand. You, you know, it's, I don't trust things like that because I have lost Wi-Fi before. I've had issues when I'm trying to connect the camera to my phone. There's things like that sometimes that, that can not work correctly. 
I'm just telling people buy a camera with dual card slots and then you don't have to worry about all of these extra things. It gives you that peace of mind that you're never going to have to tell a client, client that you've lost images. Um, I saw on someone's YouTube channel that it's best to keep cloud storage. Yeah, and I just talked about that uh, in case of photo corruption. I had the uh, little card that you can take uh, and plug into that. I'll grab it so I'll show you because you might not have seen it. Just that little device. Uh, you've got all your different card slot sizes. There's compact flash here. Um, your SD card can be put in there. Um, you know, and it's, it's amazing. It's got a little hard drive built into this. And it does incremental backups. And that's what I was using when I had one card slot done. But it doesn't save you if the card corrupts while you're shooting. Uh, you know, it only saves you for what you've backed up previously. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm just not prepared to do it again. Uh, like I've said to you, my clients come first. I, I'm not worrying about my ego and, and stuff like that. I'm there for my clients to give them the thing that they've paid for. And I'm never, ever going to tell a client I can't deliver their work. Uh, only card failure I've ever encountered was on my GoPro Session 4. It was my fault removing the card and putting it into my phone to view the files. Yeah, but see, I said the same thing, Common Culture. I was exactly like you, and it happened to me on a paid job. Like I said, it's like Russian roulette. You never know when it can happen. You, you just don't know. That's the problem, and I'm not prepared to do it. Uh, can't you tether a hard drive via Bluetooth for cameras with only one card? Don't know. Um, again, it's more stuff than I want to be issued with or worry about. Two cards, you don't have to worry. It's all built into the car, into the camera. Um... That is why my blood sugar rise when somebody say back up, back then we did not have two card slots. For crying out loud, that is why we have technology. Exactly. It's, it's an irrelevant comment. Uh, it's irrelevant. Because your client's going to say, more than likely, what happened to the second card? And, and this is the thing. You owe your client a responsibility to give you the service you've paid for. If you failed in that responsibility, your reputation can be damaged. And if you're willing to damage your reputation, uh, I just can't believe you would do that. Um, what else have we got? Uh, I'm just going down to the ones where it's showing this because it makes it obvious. Um, oops. 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 Uh, let me go. Oh yeah, we're down to here. So Sam said, I'm fingers crossed that Sony will also lower their prices on some of their G Master lenses, uh, primes later this year with a uh, any camera announcement. Yeah, but I, I'm not sure that they will go much lower. Yesterday when I was in the camera store, I just look, always look around. I was looking at the Nikon um, 70 to 200 F, the, the version 3 or 2, the latest one, and that was the same price as the G Master 70 to 200 that they had in there. Very simple, it might have been $50 difference. So if you're dealing with new lenses that are just announced, the Sony G Master lenses aren't that expensive. Yes, they're more expensive than someone like Sigma uh, or Tamron, obviously. But if you're dealing with native lenses like Sony, Canon, and Nikon, they're all basically the same price. Uh, so the Sony lenses aren't expensive. Um, A9 or A7 III, the A9 I prefer, uh, definitely. Alien down. <laughs> um, Manfrotto now makes Carter rebranded. Okay, so it'll probably be through Manfrotto now that that backpack is done through. I love that backpack. It's the best one I've got. I've got a couple of others, uh, but that's my favorite one. Mike said Manfrotto. Yes, thanks, Mike. Gerald said, uh, don't go back, but you're scrolling. Skip some of the questions. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying now because we've been on for a while. It's one hour, 30 minutes. I'm just going to the ones that have my name uh, up there. Um, 
Photographer shoot my friend's wedding primary camera body failed. She only had one body. Oh god, I can't believe that. I had to run and grab a camera out of my car and shot the wedding for them. Oh, that's terrible. I have backups of everything that I carry. They might not be the same lenses, uh, but they're lenses that I can get by on. Uh, I always make sure I've got backups of everything I carry. Uh, I, I always have three bodies, actually. I have the A7 IX, the, A, um, the A7 III, the A9, and the A7R II, and then Kerry has an A7 III uh, as well. Um, Flippy screens are great for vloggers. Yes, they are. Jim said, uh, did you check that creature from Thailand for electronic bugs? <laughs> Uh, Fiji spending R&D money on the articulating screen of the X-T100 tells me the patent cost a lot of money to use. Maybe. Gerald said, uh, the think tank uh, with the four wheels is called the, ba the Roller Baby. Uh, I have that one and it's great. Yeah, I love that bag. It's fantastic. Um, Gerald said, correction, it's called the Roller Derby. Yeah, that's right. It was the Roller Derby. Yeah. Uh, the cable lock's inside it. Yeah, it's inside that front pocket, isn't it? Um, Gerald also said, as an older pro, I don't rely on things like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, or cloud storage, or tethering on a live event. More to go wrong. Exactly. Just get a camera with two slots in it. Keep it simple. This is the thing, guys, that, you know, that you're saying everyone's using Wi-Fi and stuff like that, but keep it simple. Two card slots is all you need. And that's what I do. I just use the two card slots and then I can also then back up on this uh, at stages during the day. Um, you know, it's keep it simple and there's less to go wrong. Mike said, I'm sure the EOS R with the 20, uh, the 28 to 70 is the perfect combo for shooting brick walls. <laughs> Zed Demon said, a flippy screen like Canon's make no sense for photos for a quick shot from below with Sony is as easy. Yeah, I'm talking about a, a Fuji type, sh uh, a Fusion shooter. They will do video and stills. A uh, flip out screen is amazing. It's not for everyone, and I agree. If it's not for you, you don't have to use it. Remember, if it has a flippy out screen, don't flip it out. Keep it closed. It's simple as that. Um, is that uh, King Can of Coke, or am I seeing things? No, it's uh, Coke. Coke, no sugar. Now, other people, I know I showed this yesterday, but I'm gonna show you anyway, because people have asked me to show it. I wanted to show you me with hair. Um, where are we? All right, you ready? Let me see if I can get it to focus. There I am, guys. There I am, Art Garfunkel. <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to show you. That's my daughter there as well, little cutie. Uh, what else have we got? ZD said, flippy screen like Canon's makes no... Oh, I've already read that. Yep. Um, no free tickets to Hotel Hawaii launch event, but possible Coke sponsorship. <laughs> I love it. Hi, Altric. How are you? Uh, when I use card ba uh, backup card, I just leave 128 card gig uh, in the camera. I do. They're just 128 cards in there, and I never take them out. I don't have to worry about changing it because they're going onto the second card. Uh, and like I said, I just back up every so often just with this, um, and then I've got that third backup as well. Uh, Susie and a mullet haircut. I love it. All right, guys. Well, that's probably all for about now. Uh, we've been on for an hour and 30 minutes. Again, I'm going to get abused for being on too long again. Uh, please, if you can, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to join our Facebook page. Don't forget to join the Photography Videography School. Let me bring it up and show you. Um, there's three people wanting to join now, which is fantastic. Uh, it's Photography and Videography School. If you, Google, if you put that into Facebook, you'll find it. Um, weekly competitions. You can share your uh, YouTubes, you can share your business pages, Instagrams, you can share everything. We've got over 2,000 people in here now. Very positive site. Uh, it has video as well as stills. That's why I'm calling it Photography and Videography School. Um, but please, you know, like uh, Panda Photographers shared a thing here about the Hero Black. Uh, I put the thing in the uh, when I was shopping yesterday. I make announcements when I'm coming online as well. 
Um, but yeah, please join us. It's a great site. So pop on there and join us. I'd love to see you on there, guys. It's a much better place for asking questions than uh, anywhere else for us. So please join us there. Um, last couple of things before I head off. Um, Dennis said, so you actually had hair. Well, yeah, I did, Dennis. It was actually quite long at one stage. It's quite funny. Um, Peter said, thanks for all the advice. No worries, Peter. Comment said, thanks for all the effort and giving feedback. No worries. Um, Jeffrey said, thanks, mate. Have a great weekend. Well, hope you guys all have a fantastic weekend. I might try and get the Tamron review up tomorrow. It'll be a mix of those other reviews, sort of just put all together, though. Um, <laughs> you're more handsome, Paul. <laughs> Uh, so stay tuned for that, uh, and apart from that, I might come on live if they announce stuff for, for Panasonic. Um, so catch you later, guys. Have a great weekend, everyone, and I'll see you all soon for the next video. Bye for now.